Hi guys, Lewis here from Authority Hacker and today I'm reviewing the Thrive Architect plugin which is a visual front-end page builder for WordPress and a heavily anticipated reboot of Thrive Content Builder. So I'm going to walk you through this plugin starting with the user interface. And if you've ever used Elementor, you'll see that this has a very similar look and feel and in the same way you have your element library in the side and you can drag these onto the page. So I'm going to drag a heading, heading element in here and you can also just click and it will add it to the page. And what you'll notice is the sidebar uh, panel changes to properties whenever you do that. Now, there's a lot of additional options here. Um, you have the usual stuff like font color, font size, line height. Um, and then you get some more advanced stuff. So text transform, letter spacing, text shadows. Uh, you, the usual uh, margin and paddings, but you also get um, a max width container here, so you can control the width of these individual elements, which is really, really nice. So most of the action happens here in the sidebar, but not everything does because you can actually edit text in line. Um, this is something you could do in the previous builder, um, but if you've moved over to um, a page builder like Elementor recently, you'll know that you normally have to edit this in the sidebar. It doesn't it doesn't work in line. Now it's really nice for me coming back to uh, Thrive Architect um, to be able to do that and really if you just type here uh, you'll see that it's, it's almost like you're editing a live page and especially so when you slide away this sidebar and you can just keep typing um, and this is really really nice to use I have to say. Uh, one of my favorite things about coming back to this plugin. You can also see here that we have some basic formatting options so we don't even need to go back into the sidebar for a lot of this stuff. Um, you've got your bold, your underline, strike through, you can create lists, you can align the text and you can set the paragraph format as well as add links and uh, insert a read more tag. So there's a lot of good stuff here um, and one last thing I want to uh, point out in terms of the interface is the uh, element breadcrumbs and you can see up here it selected the paragraph text element that's because we've only got one thing going on here so if I if I delete this and I drop in a content box and then I drop in a paragraph element inside that box. What you'll notice is the breadcrumb trail up the top is now two levels deep and I am selected on the text element. So if I want to select the content box, I can try and hover over it and try and get that content box selected, which as you can see is a little difficult. There's barely anything in it. And this was a big problem in the original Thrive Content Builder. But this time around, even if I select the wrong element, I can go up the top here and select the content box and the, the, um, the panel will change to accommodate that, which is a really, really nice change. It's not even um, something that I thought they would be able to fix, but clearly they've come up with a, with a good solution to that. Let's talk about the, uh, the page settings. So we'll go behind the scenes a little bit here. And if you click off the element and then you, you click this cog icon up here, you get some uh, settings. Now, some of some of the settings have definitely been removed since um, since the launch, which I can only assume is to iron out some bugs. But I'll walk you through what we do have here. Um, so we've got the page events, edit HTML, custom CSS, turn on and off save reminders, and the switch editor side. So if I click this, as you can imagine, it just switches my editor side. Um, this is not new. This was in the old. For our content builder but something that is new is the way that uh, page events are handled so by clicking this it brings up a page events manager and this is a lot nicer there's a lot fewer steps here um, to set up a, a page event so for example if I want to make a pop-up appear on exit intent I just click that I can set my mobile settings um, I can then continue and choose which of my pop-ups I want to display trust me when I say this is miles better than it than it used to be now there's there is another upgrade in this uh, panel as well, which is the edit HTML and edit custom CSS. These editors have been uh, overhauled. Uh, I'm going to show you the HTML one first. As you can see, the first thing is that it covers the entire screen. Um, before it was just a small box in the middle of the screen, and it was really really fiddly. Um, and also the the HTML is now color coded, so it's a lot easier to edit than it than it ever was before. Um, and finally, you have the controls on the side here, rather than having to scroll right to the very bottom, which is always a problem when you have a lot going on on the page. So I really like that. But even more so, I like the custom CSS editor. 
which opens here in the sidebar, but you can also expand this out. And again, it's color coded, it formats your code for you. So if I wanted to add uh, paragraph styling, for example, I can just do that now. Um, for example, font size, 40 pixels. Obviously that's not what I wanna do, but you get the point. It's much, much easier to add your CSS and manage your styling um, if, you, if you're the type of person that likes to go into this editor. So coming out of that, now the last thing I want to point out here is the undo and redo buttons, which were always there, but this time around we've got some hotkeys um, to play with. So for undo it's control and Z, and for redo it's control and Y. So just to give you an example of that in action, let's say I change this text and I want to change it back. Control Z, bang, so much quicker. And if you if you have this in full screen mode, um, it's just a joy to work with because you never have to open that panel if you make a mistake. Okay, so let's open that up again and talk about responsiveness. And this is a really, really big thing for Thrive Architect. Um, like the original, Thrive Architect is fully mobile responsive. The difference this time being that you have so much more control over how things appear on mobile and tablet displays. So to get into your responsive view, you click down here and you can change to tablet and you can change to mobile. And you can actually make edits while you're looking in these views. So I can, I can continue editing in mobile view. I can then switch to tablet and continue editing. I can add styling changes, change the font size. And what's really good about this is anything that's done in the sidebar here is specific to that display and the one below it. Meaning if I make a change on desktop, let's say I want to change my font to red, that will apply all the way down to, to tablet and to mobile. But then if I go to tablet and I want to change that to blue now, let's find the blue, that will apply on tablet and on mobile. So you'll see if I go back to desktop, it's red. Um, and that's because the changes cascade. So you can get really, really uh, granular with the changes that you make on mobile displays. The only caveat here is that if you edit the text itself or if you make any changes in line, so whether that's deleting elements, adding new elements or, ch or changing those elements um, outside of the sidebar, it will affect every, um, every screen size and every device. One final thing to point out here is that you can hide individual elements on individual displays. So for example, if I want this to display on desktop and tablet but not on mobile, I can scroll down. I can click on the responsive tab and then I can disable this on mobile and what you'll notice is when I go to mobile it actually disappears completely and there's all sorts of things you can do with this um, if you have a design that looks a bit crowded on mobile you can use this to tweak that and and remove some elements just for that display and you can also use it to have uh, inline changes display depending on which device you're using so it's a really really useful thing here and something that was completely missing in the old builder. Okay, let's talk about layouts and I'm gonna go back to the desktop view here. Creating layouts with Thrive Architect is really, really easy and if I drag something onto the page here, you'll see that it naturally spans the full width of the page. Now, I can continue dragging elements onto the page or I can create a column layout and one way to do that is to go into my elements library and find a column layout, which is here and I can drag that onto the page. It will then ask me how many columns do you want? Let's say I want a split column and I can drag elements inside of those columns. Now that's one way to do it, but another way to do it is to drag elements onto the page and then drag next to them and it will automatically create that column layout for you. And you can do this as many times as you want. So I can create three columns here and then I can say I want uh, a full width column below it and then a split column below that. You can see there's quite a few different ways you can arrange this and it's really, really fast because you don't have to insert those widgets every single time. So it's much more fluid than it was before and it allows you to create complex layouts faster than ever. Another key addition is background sections, which were previously only available if you use a Thrive theme. So let me show you how those work. I'm gonna add that to the page. And you'll notice that you get some extra settings here. So you, you get to control the maximum width, section minimum height, and you can match it to, to fill the entire screen uh, vertically. Now, another thing is to stretch to fit the screen width, which is probably gonna be the most common use case here. 
So I can enable that, it will fill the uh, entire width of my screen and I can choose how, how far the content inside of that expands the section. And what's really nice about this is you can change the color of this section and uh, I, I'm gonna, sh gonna add some height to this so you can see and I'm gonna go to the uh, background color options, background style, I'm gonna add a single color and there you go, there's a red fill. And then I can drag elements inside. Now, obviously, this is not a very nice design, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of how this works. In terms of layouts, there's really not much that you cannot do uh, with Private Architect. In fact, I haven't yet come across anything um, that's particularly difficult to, to pull off. Um, it's still early days, so maybe I'll run into something, but at the moment, I'm really liking what I see here in terms of layout flexibility. And speaking of flexibility, let's talk about the elements themselves. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, bear with me. One of the biggest upgrades was um, the increased flexibility over element properties. And I'll give you some examples of what I mean. So the first thing I'm gonna drag in here is a styled list. So I'm gonna go up here. This is really nice, by the way, to be able to search your elements. Uh, I'm gonna drag that in. And whereas before, you could only choose between a, a set number of icons, you can click change icons and you bring up the uh, icon manager here, which has hundreds of icons to choose from. Um, again, they're searchable, which is really nice. So I'm just gonna click uh, this one for just as an example, and it changes all my icons there. Now, there's a bit of an issue with alignment. Um, I'm not sure if this is a bug. I imagine it is. You can also click the icon itself and change that individually, which is something that was previously impossible. And of course, you can change the icon colors again. This was uh, this was only available in presets, so you could only choose between, I don't know, eight different colors. Now you literally have unlimited options to choose from. And icon size, which again, you couldn't control. Um, this was fixed because they were images, they weren't uh, SVG icons. Another one is buttons, and before we only had a, a given number of presets to choose from. Now you can create any combination, so I can add an icon in, I can choose which side to align that. I can, again, I can bring up that icon manager, change the icon, I can change the color of the icon, the button uh, color, the button size, button width. Uh, there's even an option to add secondary button text. Way more options, more than I can go through in this video. Another element here, let's, let's show you one more. Um, I could pick any here and they've all been vastly improved, but tables is one that's particularly been uh, overhauled. Here I select the number of rows I want, and I can change the cell padding, I can change the vertical alignment of the content uh, within that cell. You can change the header color, you can change uh, the borders, obviously, um, I can make those, uh, let's go with green. There's just an infinite amount of things you can do here. And of course, I can manage these cells and add new columns and new rows however I see fit. There are similarities to the old the old uh, tables element, but, but in my opinion, this is just so much better, so much easier to use. Again, just massively improved over the old version. These are just uh, a few of the elements, but like I said, everything has had a major boost um, and they all provide a lot of customization across the board. One final thing, let's talk about compatibility and a lot has changed in this aspect um, and which honestly could be an entire video in itself. So I'll just briefly cover this. First of all, if you've used the old content builder, you will be able to edit almost all of your content by migrating those elements over and that will just show as a button similar to this one, uh, one click and it will be brought over into Thrive Architect. Second, and this is a big one, there's no more content locking. If you deactivate Drive Architect, your content is essentially moved to the standard WordPress editor and the styling will be preserved as much as it possibly can given the WordPress editor's limitations. So, you know, one example of that might be uh, if, you, if you have columns, uh, those are just gonna stack on top of each other because uh, WordPress doesn't support columns. And finally, uh, you have more control over WordPress content in general. So if you have a page with content on it, what you'll find is you can add content above it or below it in Thrive Architect. But not only that, you can also edit the content itself. It will bring up a pop-up window for WordPress content. And there's actually a widget in here. So if I drag that in, you'll notice it brings up this um, 
this WordPress content box and this is where your original content will be stored if you edit a page that has content already on it and this, this is really like I said the best of both worlds um, there's currently no editor on the market that will allow you to directly edit WordPress content so this is the best compromise that I've seen and I really really like it so that's the end of uh, this quick overview video um, I've done a full in-depth written review on the Authority Hacker blog which I recommend you check out if you're interested in giving this a go. So that's all from me and I will see you in the next video.